Hi, today we're going to talk about chronologies and how they can help you in your practice. I'm Elizabeth Rudolph and I'm the founder of JurexNurse.com. Welcome to JurexNurse.com's Legal Nurse Consultant episodes. Today we're going to talk about, like I said, chronologies, but first be sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another episode. And be sure that you share this with your nurse and colleagues so that they too can know how to do chronologies in legal nurse consultant cases. So first of all, what's your goal? Your whole goal in putting together a chronology is to reduce the facts down just to the bare minimum. Because in complex cases, there are a whole lot of facts and you want to try to make it easy to digest for you and for the attorney. So remember, whether you're reviewing cases for the plaintiff, that's the person suing, or the defendant, that's the individual or entity that is getting sued, you want to take all the different facts and distill them down to the essence. What you're working on when you're doing a chronology is simply a timeline. Remember that, it's a timeline of events. First of all, you receive the medical records, then you organize the medical records, then you review the medical records, and now it's time to sit down and do the chronology. So let's look at three things that you need to focus on, the three points. First of all, point number one, you want to use a Word document for your timeline. Number two, only relevant medical record entries go into the actual chronology. And number three, your chronology is your draft for your report. So let's go into a little bit more detail so that you understand these three very simple points because really chronologies can get kind of unwieldy if you let them. You're in charge of it. So you want to try to make them easy to understand. All right, point number one, use a Word document each time that you are doing a chronology and you want to put it into a four column format. So it will have date, description, that's, those two are important, page numbers, very important where you can find the information, and then comments. If you want to add comments, great. If you don't have comments to make, you don't have to make a comment on every single entry. You want to arrange these in accordance of the occurrence. So if you're talking about potentially a plaintiff's injury, then all the different entries in your chronology are related to that in injury, all right? Now, what if you have multiple providers? That's always kind of interesting. It's best to do a separate chronology for each provider, and then you can compile them or put them all together at the end, and so you have one big or massive, if you will, timeline or chronology, but at least you separated it by provider. Remember, keep it simple. Really, it's that KISS method, all right? Mwah. Keep it simple. Now, point number two, only relevant information goes into the medical record. If you're questioning whether the medical record has something that's relevant that you should put into your chronology, then don't put it in cut to the chase because you know what you can always put the information into the medical record it doesn't have to go into your cron so for example medical records usually come in reverse chronological order but you're going to put your chronology in chronological order that is the patient was admitted then they went to the ICU, then they went to surgery, then back to the ICU. So you've got different phases or stages of the patient's stay, starting from when they first came in until they were discharged. Now, there's a lot of immaterial information in there. Cut it out. Point number three with your chronologies. Use your chronology to write your report. You're gonna work off your chronology so you don't have to go back to the cumbersome medical records or the digital medical records. You wanna keep three tabs open on your computer at all times. The medical records tab, where you're actually reading the medical records, you wanna keep open your chronology and you wanna keep open the report that you're actually drafting. Okay, that's a wrap for today. So be sure if you have any questions that you DM me, or you put a comment below or a question because I want to know if this is helpful to you. Take one action today to make yourself successful as a professional legal nurse consultant. Have a great day.